Hi, welcome to Kiss Me, where we dive into all of our favorite rom-coms. I'm Andy H, and today we'll be looking at She's All That, released in 1999. She's All That came out in the ever-so-popular teen rom-com era. Teen movies to later fall that year include 10 Things I Hate About You, Never Been Kissed, and American Pie. Darn, that list just goes on. The script is an adaptation of George Bernard Shaw's 1913 play, Pygmalion, and the 1964 film, My Fair Lady, with the great Audrey Hepburn and Rex Harrison, that went on to win eight Academy Awards. Oh, hey look, there's Julie Andrews. She's All That was written by Robert Lee Fleming and directed by Robert Iscove who continue to direct Boys and Girls, starring Freddie Prinze Jr. and Jason Biggs, two of the biggest teen rom-com stars of the late 90s, and later the American Idol love child from Justin and Kelly. While fans are hoping for a sequel, instead Netflix released He's All That, a gender swap reboot starring two of the original cast. Yeah, I'd probably watch paint dry before getting into this movie. The movie follows a bet made between two popular high school jocks to groom a nerdy artsy girl into prom queen. Gentlemen, we have a winner. Apparently, Mary Max took a, a bet yeah. on Isco's film for a cool 10 million to gross over 103 million at the box office, ranking today the ninth highest grossing teen rom com. Twilight are still within the top five list. While it offers what the 90s teen audience wants a good looking cast of slightly older teenagers, ugly duckling makeovers, and gross out moments, it provides the needed nostalgia today bring us back to a time where cell phones were for the rich kids. It's not a perfect movie by any means, but a film that never takes itself too seriously, urging viewers to not only take a closer look at the cultural landscape of the time, but be aware of our shortcomings, calling out the stereotypes to deliberately correct them, making it a funny, heartfelt teen comedy of the late 20th century. Let's get to the movie. The film starts out with Lainey Boggs, played by Rachel E. Cook, creating an art collage about aliens and riots and something to do with the drain. After all, they say art is in the eye of the beholder or something like that. We then continue to meet her little brother Simon, played by Kieran Culkin. Ah! Oops, wrong brother. Yeah, that's the one. We then mosey to Harrison High, a Southern California high school where we see students returning from spring break. Lainey is getting dropped off by her father, played by Kevin Pollock. They filmed at Torrance High School in Torrance, California, the same set of the popular 90s teen drama Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Beverly Hills 90210. There's also a cameo from Buffy herself, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Keep an eye out for the cameo later. We are introduced to the high school heartthrob and class president, Zach Seiler, played by Freddie Prinze Jr. FBJ was on a stellar run coming off of I Know What You Did Last Summer, with a huge movie and voice acting career ahead of him, including my favorite appearance of him in Friends as a male nanny Sandy. While Zach's character is a typical jock jerk, where girls called Melissa don't mind if they call him Connie. He called you Connie? So? Your name is Melissa. We will see that the character's vulnerability really make this movie work. Apparently casting FPJ was a wise choice. Other than making teenage girls' heart beat a little bit faster, he claims to be more of a real life Dungeon and Dragons geek who made the character to be a bit sweeter than what was actually in the original script. Well, I was considered really like strange and weird. We continue to meet Zach's good looking friends, Preston played by Dew Hill, who further gained popularity as Gus in the TV series Psych, and Dean Sampson, played by the late Paul Walker. Paul, who was introduced to the world as a teen heart throb in the movie Varsity Blues that was only released two weeks prior to She's All That continued to fast stardom, as he is most notably known from the ever so popular Fast and the Furious movies. Dawson Cast an alert! What's that you ask? Well, it's the phenomenon of grown adults playing teenagers. Paul, who's supposed to be 17 and 18 in the movie, was actually 24, well past teenage years. Zach's popular narcissistic girlfriend, Taylor Vaughn, played by Julie Lynn O'Keefe, breaks up with Zach as she started to date Brock Hudson, played by Matthew Lillard. Brock Hudson? What kind of a name is that? Taylor and Brock met in spring break in Florida, and Taylor could not resist Brock due to his celebrity status from real world. That was MTV's painfully but eye-opening 1990s reality show. I personally think she couldn't resist him due to his amazing dance skills, but we will see more on that later. This was actually a start for FPJ and Matthew Lillard's on-screen appearances as they went on to star in an additional four movies together, including two Scooby-Doo movies. Meanwhile, in Lainey's art class, where we see her classmates painting clowns. Lainey's art teacher really wants her to find out what represents her, while Starbucks girls come in to offer their review on Lainey's art and how it's so dark comparing her to Van Gogh and Picasso that she should consider to kill herself to be recognized. 
classy. As the school is made aware of Taylor's breakup with Zach, not to mention it was announced by the one and only school DJ Usher, Zach realizing his high school king legacy is in jeopardy and to protect his pride, saying that Taylor is replaceable, that anyone can be like her, given the right look, the right boyfriend. Bam. Dean, who fully disagrees, bets Zach that he can't turn around a girl into prom queen. They ultimately land on Lainey, who stumbles on the steps, clearly showing her awkwardness and steep challenge due to the way she looks and the clothes she wears. Apparently, the scene was shot a few times, with the fall not originally within the script. Zach approaches Lainey with the first attempt to be unsuccessful. Zach's sister's Mac, played by Anna Paquin, hears about the break of an ass. Who is the next rebound skank? Zach tells Mac, she kind of blew me off. Or Mac tells Zach to mount up and make an effort to actually know the girl. Yeah, good idea. We then meet Zach's parents, with his father played by Tim Matheson famously known as Otter in National Lampoon's Animal House, where Otter's character was to move to California to become a doctor, the same as Zach's father. He questions Zach on why the college acceptance letters are taking so long and that they can use mommy and daddy's connections to help, to which we think Zach must not be very smart. Why, no, he actually is, because we see him flipping through college acceptance letters to Dartmouth, Yale, and Harvard. Wow, what a tough life to make these decisions. We then jump to Taylor and meet her friends including Katie, played by Gabrielle Union, who later has a supporting role in 10 Things I Hate About You in 1999. Taylor, who insists she will be prom queen and that there is no competition. We then draw the parallel to Lainey, who is seen wearing this ever so stunning falafel hat. Apparently the hat was Rachel Lee Cook's idea, and a man who wants to supersize my balls. Where we see Zach coming in, asking to spend time with Lainey. Zach's trying to find a way to relate to Lainey, other than having large balls. Quickly thinks on his feet and sees Lainey's shoes covered in paint splatter. Art. Lainey's best friend, Jesse, played by Eldon Henson, encourages Lainey and gives Zach his ticket for the Jester Art Show later that night. Well then, we are ever so graced to see the art show begin with the bursting out of the womb to be silent and be still, which clearly has got this soccer boy to be out of his element. Lainey, thinking she can pull one over Zach and knows what a faker he really is, puts him on the spot via the late Alexis Arquette and forces him on stage. Zach, who presents himself initially as shy and underwear of what to do, proceeds to pull out a hacky sack from his pocket, yes, very 90s, and performs a very long scene of never let a drop and everyone is counting on you. Foreshadowing much? Is this the daddy issues with the pressure to go to college? FPJ was excited to do this scene, even working with a professional hacky sacker player. However, he can only do two to three tricks, so the full body shots are actually the professional look like who performs. Bummer FPJ, but good try. The crowd, much to Lainey's surprise, are in awe of Zach and offer him applause. Zach, still on his performance high, continues to ask Lainey if she has contacts, hint hint, and proceeds to tell her that she has beautiful eyes. Wait, what? Who says oversized glasses are not sexy? So come on, enough with the do you have contacts line. The next day, Zach, as determined as he is, shows up at Lainey's house meets Lainey's dad, Mr. Poole, who apparently takes some jock straps as a treasure from his day job, and Simon, the Sega-loving brother. Zach tries to convince Lainey to go to the beach with him, but she resists, but only agrees so, so he doesn't come in and hang out with Simon to play Dreamcast. Seriously though, it's Sega. Beach versus Sega, you pick. At the beach, we realize that Lainey is more of an environmentalist. Do you know how many gallons of chemicals are dumped into the oceans each year? Actually, the real number is 8 million metric tons. Whereas Zach is more of a sunny type of guy. We thought this was going to be a relaxing day stroll along the beach. But no, Zach's friends and Taylor's friends, minus Taylor. Wait, where is she? Oh, she's probably with Brock. That they all show up. Clearly, Zach is all over this morning period. And us viewers get a nice montage of random beach volleyball hits. Gee, doesn't that look fun? The group then invites Lainey to Preston's house party, which Lainey says no, and that she needs to clean her house. So while we're at home having a family fun Jeopardy evening, oh, who interrupts again? But you've guessed it, the very persistent Zach. But wait, Lainey is not cleaning like she said she was. Ah, uh, but just in case, Zach shows up with the soccer team to do the house cleaning. But wait, freeze frame here, who is this? Ah, but yet another heartthrob will have rise to fame as Jess in the original Gilmore Girls, Mile Ventimiglia. As the soccer team is cleaning, of course Lainey can't go to the party the way she looks. So to her surprise, Zach brings a little red dress. Yes, very 1990s. But what about her hair and makeup? Ah, enter Mac to the rescue, who helps her with her Burt-like unibrow and gives her a very fashionable haircut in the matter of 15 minutes. Lainey, that makes her slow-mo grand entrance one of the most memorable scenes in the movie to oh one of our favorite songs kiss me by sixpence none the richer this song hit number two in the billboard's hot 100 after being featured in the movie going on to stay in the top 10 for 16 weeks in europe the movie's title is actually changed from she's all that to kiss me and then we see the famous fall for only zach the prince charming to catch her zach and lady arrive at the party with laney clearly out of her element but oozes more confidence than expected rachel lee cook apparently was beyond 
uncomfortable in the dress, having to hold her breath in at times, since it was intentionally made a size too small. The color red was a psychological effect to draw your eye to, from the change from the drastic colors of Lainey's drab clothes. Zach does his rounds with the eyes drawing on Lainey, assuring Dean that it's still just a bet and nothing is going on between them. Lainey then finds her art classmate who calls her Splatter Girl, who is puking at her guts in the bathroom. The classmate plays I'm a richer than you card with Lainey, and Lainey proceeds to use her artistic skills and gets creative. You go girl, the red dress, no glasses, and the haircut must be changing you. Um no, it's her amazing personality. As Lainey is getting her art on, we see the epic scene of the movie, the first out of two dance scenes. Here Matthew Lillard's douchebag character Brock really shines, but the dance moves to Give It To Me Baby by Rick Jean is well worth the watch. They also nailed his duct tape vibe laser suit like outfit. As the music is playing, Taylor spots Lainey across the room and approaches her. Oddly enough, in a different but same color of red dress. Coincidence? Taylor demands to know why Lainey is there and pours a drink down Lainey's dress. Hey, joke is on Taylor. As this isn't Lainey's dress, it's probably Zach's or assuming his sister is Max. I guess she must be concerned about the dry cleaning bill. Anyways, the music miraculously stops and Taylor proceeds to tell Lainey with everyone overhearing she is a waste of perfectly good yearbook space. Lainey runs away for Zach to follow her and she wants to go home. The next day at school, Lainey shows up and people are staring at her and Jessie and to much they're surprised, she is nominated for prom queen. Shocker, who done it? We then see that, oh no, Taylor got dumped by Brock to go on another reality show road rules, all stars. How will the humiliated Taylor go on? Ah, count your lucky stars. We then cut to another sport montage, but of soccer this time. Where or where though is Jess from Gilmer Girl? We see that Zach is clearly not on his game. Perhaps he's thinking about Lainey and Dean and Preston were sure to make him aware. Taylor is now a free agent, so why doesn't Zach go back to her? Dean makes it clear that he'll be pursuing Lainey, causing a rift in their bromance. This is one contest you're gonna lose. As Lainey is hiding in her art studio, working on her newest masterpiece, Guess who shows up at the door again? Could it be Simon, her friend, to comfort her? Or wait, perhaps Santa? No, it's Zach. Zach starts to admire her art when we find out about Lainey's mom who died from cancer, who was also an artist. It was a very touching moment where Zach questions her and why she's shutting people out. Lainey then bites back and brings up why he's so undecided in college. And Zach describes the pressure he is under just to be like his dad. Then they put it aside and the last moment we've all been waiting for, the kiss. Ugh is interrupted by Lainey's thoughts of, you're not going to just try to get my vote for prom king, now causing Zach to run away. Now the recent competition is on for prom queen. It's getting real bitch. Hey look, it's the Hansons, and Lainey is handing out buttons. Even has her own rap group to support her with the catchy song, yeah, she's, she's all that. that. Lainey unaware of the campaigning going on behind her, because does she really care? She just wants to understand why Zach didn't kiss her. Ah, friends, but look who finally shows up. Yes, here's the cameo from Sarah Michelle Geller, aka Buffy the Vampire Slayer, aka Freddie Prince Jr.'s real life wife. Apparently, she came to visit FPJ on set, but refused to say any lines, but instead making for this awkward moment. But one of the most famous scenes in the movie that was made especially to attract the male audience since grosser comedies were a hit, and well, still are big hits. Enter the Shermanator, or to become the Shermanator to us later on in 1999 in American Pie. Sherman, or I mean pube boy, pulls out pubes to place on Simon's pizza. Oh, the real ghost factor of it all. Zach shows up in all of his glory and demands for pube boy and his friends to hoover it. As we all laugh and yet gag at the thought of this, Zach now becomes a hero to both Lainey and Simon, showing his love for the Boggs family, but mostly to Lainey through Simon. But hey, don't be super grossed out. The props department only used fibers from Corn's husk to be the pubes. Smart, right? Try that on your next April Fool's joke to add some fiber. Okay, so a couple things happen here. Dean shows up at Lainey's work to ask her to the prom, but she doesn't like him like that. And Zach's dad finds his acceptance letter and Zach proceeds to tell him he's not like him. And the dad hits him with a zinger of, blaming me is not going to change the fact that the future will happen. True that, Otter? True that. Then we enter the two weeks leading to the prom and where everything builds up. Taylor, who is dumped, as we know, still wants to be prom queen and go to the prom with Zach, as they always discuss. Thought we were going together. Dean proceeds to let us slip about the bet. My bet? And Zach confirms when Taylor is rubbing it in. And another shot of the heartthrob. Oh boy, he does have nice eyes. As Lainey is channeling all her sadness, rejection, and anger into her clown painting, Mr. Poole shows up to give her a pep talk that she can't continue to live life like this, and there's someone waiting upstairs. Oh, please let it be Zach. Please let it be Zach. After all, he's known for just showing up unannounced and a bit stalker-like. Ah, uh, but to our disappointment, it's Dean. Where Dean says, I didn't ask anyone else on the chance that I come here tonight and you'd say yes. Okay, yeah, I just swooned a little. We enter the prom where Zach still goes, but takes his sister Mac and not Taylor. Yes, Zach, way to play it. But Taylor shows up, forgives Zach, and asks him to dance. 
We then are smacked in the face with a 1990s 9 nostalgia, with an intensely choreographed dance to Rockefeller Skank. Again, this is another hit of the movie. However, all the royalties actually went to other artists, since the song was composed of four different other songs. So Fatboy Slim did not receive a penny from this movie. Yeah, I remember in high school how all the dances looked so perfectly choreographed. Ah, uh, those were the times. Movie execs did catch how rare this would be, such that they went back and reshot more scenes of Usher saying, remember what I taught you in dance class or whatever? With Taylor and Zach are off dancing, we see Dean doing his business and bring him a closing deal with Lainey. Jesse overhears and runs to warn Zach, but alas with the tension mounting, who could be the earthquake's next prom king? Of course, the one and only Zach, with prom queen Taylor, who Lainey responds, I think the right person won, and decides to get out of there with Dean. Zach, who doesn't see their exit, and makes as good as it gets speech, and drops the mic as Jesse and Mac grab his attention, frantically rushing out, phoning around to figure out which hotel they went to. Meanwhile, Pumpkin Nose arrives home to see Simon and Mr. Poole discussing shapes of pools to Simon's enjoyment, as Lainey describes her night of using a foghorn when Dean tries to get handsy. As we all think the hope is lost, and Zach will be driving around to the hundreds of California hotels that have the room 409, we see Zach standing in there awkwardly. I mean, they must have offered him a chair. And Lainey and him head outside where Zach admits he's made the bet before he met her and knew himself. Aww. They wrap it up nicely with Janie's full intent to go to art school, and Zach is planning on going to art school jokingly, to be silent, to be still, and we finally see their first kiss. Ah, but what happened to the bet, you ask? Well, Zach of course lost since Lainey was not prom queen after all, and has to show up to graduation naked. Shyamalan wanted to rewrite the graduation scene with a streaker, to which the director rejected, but opted with the tossing of the soccer ball instead. But seriously guys, the question is, does he have supersized balls? All right, so now we're down to the awards. Okay, so for best kiss, it has to be, it clearly needs to be, the one and only kiss between Lainey and Zach at the end, right? That sexual tension was just built up for so long. And the most cringeworthy award goes to, while Brock's dance doesn't close second, it has to be the pew boy pizza scene. Even though we know it was not real pubes, I still cringe thinking about it and something that I'd still remember about this movie today. As this is our first episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and tag that alert bell to dive into further awkward with sweet encounters of our favorite rom-coms. Also, pop in your suggestions of which movies are your favorites. Until then, I'm Andy H, and this is Kiss Me. Pucker up.